Hello, it's great to welcome you to Melbourne Baptist Harvest Service online this morning. My name is Stuart Clark and I'm the minister here. And today we are celebrating the generosity of God found in the beauty of creation at harvest. Our sermon will look at the generosity of the early church and we will then be challenged to chair generosity with BMS Operation Chad. Well, Operation Chad uh, evolves around the hospital that Bethan and Gareth Shrubshaw work at. They're one of our missionary families and we're going to have a good focus on them later. And we want to thank Beth and Andy for the missionary prayers and our focus on BMS. We look forward to an extended clip looking at Bethan and Gareth's workplace in Gumball 2 Hospital in Chad, Africa. So tonight, tonight we will gather and we're excited again to gather for a time to reflect and that will be at 6.30 and so if you want to come please remember to book in with Dawn our secretary. Tonight we'll also have an offering for the church again and if you'd like to give to Operation Chad, uh, perhaps mark an envelope with BMS Operation Chad on it and uh, you can give tonight. Or there's also a giving link on the church Facebook or the BMS website that you could also give to. Details will come up later in this service. So thanks go to all those involved in the service today. Thanks go to Barbara and Margie as they share an interview today. And I also want to thank Matt for his wonderful editing. Let's start to focus on the celebration of creation found at harvest as we focus on some words found in Psalm 65, 9 to 13. It says, you care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You drenched its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and they sing. And we're gonna sing in a, a little while. Uh, but first we're going to bring a prayer of creational praise. Shall we pray together? Let's pray. We praise you, God of creation, faithful provider, Lord of the harvest, generous and gracious God. Creator God, once there was nothing, but now the world teems with life. And the cup of your provision is generously shared with all of creation. Once there was dark emptiness, but now there is sand, colour, vision of majestic mountains and intricate petals. We thank you today for the splendour and the beauty of creation, for the ordering of the succession of seasons and for your great love which made the world. We thank you for the good and fertile earth, for the fruits of the earth in their seasons, for the life that sustains our life, for the food that we enjoy daily. We thank you for those whose labour supplies our needs. For those, whose harvest, for those who harvest our crops, for those who transport them, for those who process them, for those who sell them. Loving God, we thank you for the generosity 
and the generous gift of yourself, particularly in Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, for his living, his dying and his rising again. Living God, we thank you for the generous gift of your Holy Spirit, the giver of life for the church, a foretaste of your new creation and for our privilege in being a part of it. We praise you, God of creation, faithful provider, Lord of the harvest, generous and gracious God. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to join with uh, Emily and we're going to sing, O Lord my God, also known as How Great Thou Art. And the second verse says, it's kind of a reflection on harvest, when through the woods and the forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, those wonderful moments of being out in creation, giving thanks, uh, like we can at harvest time, found in this wonderful classic song. Let's sing with Emily.
Morning everybody at Melbourne Baptist Church. It's great to be with you. I've got Barbara here today. Hi Barbara. Everyone. Hello Margie. Hi everyone. Hello. It's great to see you Barbara. I know that I've seen you around the village out on your walks but how have you been over the last few months in lockdown? Oh my goodness it seems so bizarre hasn't it but everybody feels the same. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been it's horrible to say it's been good in some ways when people have been getting ill and worse but in some ways it has. It's mm. been, um, yeah, all those afternoons, well, a lot of days in the garden in that first two and a half months. Mm. I found actually really quite nice in a strange sort of way, not to be chasing your tail as we often are. Yeah. Um, just to play loads of worship music on YouTube. YouTube's been brilliant. Yeah. Well, they've got everything on there from really old to really modern and you just right. pick the bit you like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, and oh, and the birds, that first two and a half months with no traffic yeah, was actually lovely. You could actually it's amazing. Hear the, it's amazing what you notice, isn't it? It's just yeah, incredible. Yeah. I mean, you sort of hear the birds, but I think I must have had several nesting rounds out here, and it's not a big garden. They were just, yeah, producing all over the place, because I suppose it's so quiet oh. and nice. Them. <laughs> oh wow that's incredible and one of the yeah. reasons um, um i thought of you the, today is because today is our harvest service and we're obviously talking about god's creation a bit and actually you've just you've just confirmed you're the right person to ask because you love you love creation don't you, you love being out there yeah, yeah. And you've always been involved in our harvest services and and what have you, me and Sylvia, yeah. yeah. Yeah, putting it all together, all those decorations. I just wanted to ask you, what does harvest mean to you, Barbara? That's, a, that's an interesting one, because it does mean, obviously, the cycle of the year, and you know when harvest comes round that it, the summer's getting on, well, it's on its way out, which is both beautiful because the colours, when all the trees change and everything, yeah. is just wonderful, but you know it's not going to get any warmer. <laughs> For a while um i yeah it is a reflective sort of time my dad hated it he hated the change of the season but i don't hate it no it's just oh you're just aware that yes there's another year rolling on and oh my goodness yes and this has been a year like no other yes, <laughs> so yeah, it has <laughs> say the least <laughs> yes yeah, so it's best to say a day at a time at the minute i think mm. but I do like harvest really and uh, yeah as I said you know you grow up with those same two hymns oh and all things bright and beautiful which is lovely yeah. you grow up with those hymns and uh, yeah so it's all part of it yeah it's, it's that, so does, how does God speak to you through creation or through harvest well, well I know it's a cliche but I do not understand how anyone can be out there and not believe in a, in a God, in our case, or rather okay. the God. But yeah. even any, you know, I just find it baffling. I really yeah. do. When you look at, I mean, when I was a child, I liked science and, you know, we looked at the planets and all the rest. And they, oh, yeah, it's all very nice up there, but nothing beats the sight of the world from, from here now. Where, when they went up and landed on the moon and you got that shot yeah. looking back down, oh, it just blew me away. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's it cannot be an accident i just i think it's harder to believe it's an accident yeah totally <laughs> totally how could this just happen yeah i so, know it's ludicrous yeah it, it all works so well when it does when we don't get in the way too much it all works so beautifully and everything's designed to feed everything else and oh yeah yeah <laughs> and we were talking about a little bit before the interview how harvest has changed from the perspective of it used to be very much one point in the year and now we to have a harvest the whole time but um yeah, yeah you were saying that do you 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 have memories of kind of a certain few weeks of the year yeah it used it used to be you know building up to it and uh i mean i started life in north norfolk where it was very uh, seasonal obviously but um then when we moved down to london it wasn't so obvious but you still had the trees changing color and all that sort of thing which is beautiful that's the one thing I would like to go to America for, to see the fall, as they call it. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely here as well. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And just all the crops that you see growing and then <laughs> being harvested. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now Richard lives over at Orwell. I normally do the Moulton Lane run. Yeah. 
Right. And you do, you do actually, although it's only 10 minutes across there, it feels as though you're absolutely in the back of beyond, really. Mm. Because it's, yeah, it's beautiful, actually. Amazing sunsets over there sometimes. Yeah. This sort of year and into winter. Yeah. Yeah, the beauty of God's creation and all, all that he's given us. Now, um, you've already mentioned all things bright and beautiful, but I did say to you, are there some harvest hymns that you really enjoy? Well, yeah, I mean, there's the two that everybody knows in the sense that, yeah, even people who didn't grow up going to church know um, we plough the fields and scatter. It's such a the, the one, really. Yeah. And yeah, a little bit cheesy in a way. Um, but the other one, Come You Thankful People Come, um, as I said, I'm sure we sang that as a choir last harvest. Um, yeah. And I remember Liz saying, saying to me, because I'm not sure if I suggested it, but she got the idea from someone. And she said when she looked at the words, especially the latter part of that hymn, it goes from the natural harvest to the harvest at the end, um, sorting out the wheat and the tares. Mm. I think this season has been really wheat and tares, actually, mm. because you've had terrible things going on, obviously. But you've yeah. also had little blessings springing up here and there. Yeah. And well, God knows, God's not surprised by this. No. But, and He knows how it's all going to sort out. But I must confess, I hope He doesn't leave it too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm it does feel like you just don't know when it's going to come to an end, but we're getting no, used to that, aren't we? We are. We are. And I'm just, again, cliche perhaps, but I'm so thankful I know He's there. Yeah. You know, I can't. Imagine going through this, well, going through a lot of things, actually, that we've, I and we've all been through without knowing that. Yes, yeah. Just unimaginable. So, so is that, has that been what's been most key to you, do you think, through lockdown? Yeah, yeah. I think reflecting on where we're going, which we don't actually know, so, but also, I'm, I don't know, I, I, I think God's allowed it, I don't think he's sent it directly, but I, he's obviously allowed it, and maybe we've got a lot to learn, well I'm sure we've got a lot to learn, yeah. not, not just people in general, but the church perhaps, mm. um, praying we've got a window of opportunity coming where we can really push the gospel really, because mm. it's sad to think of people going off who perhaps haven't heard it, um yeah i think we've got we need to take hold of that responsibility more firmly yeah um but we're all guilty aren't we i mean i i was talking to someone the other day and she's made a comment and after she went i thought oh i should have said so and so we thought yeah we're only human yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. and it's, it's difficult isn't it sometimes but yeah we need to be looking for those opportunities to share the looking gospel for the opportunities yes exactly yeah that's what paul said is it always be ready to say without yeah. preaching of people yeah. yeah totally and that's what brenda was saying in her interview last week yeah. about the shoe boxes wasn't it it's like it's an amazing opportunity just to share so yeah, definitely. Um, well thank you barbara can we pray for you please do thank you <laughs> okay. barbara i thank you for barbara i thank you for um her her smile and just the joy that she brings and i thank you for that clear knowledge that you are there and um all through this time she's known your presence and she's seen you in creation and in in the the seasons of the year father she recognizes it's your design and it's your plan and you are the provider of it all and the creator of it all and father i just thank you for that and i thank you for the witness that barbara is in that and i pray that you would continue to use her to um share your love with other people and father i just pray that you would bless her and her wider family and keep them safe at this time in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Margie. Thank, oh, thank you. you, Barbara. Well, I think we're now going to sing one of your, your hymns that you've talked about. We don't normally do hymns in, in our church, but a harvest we do. So we're going to use both of those songs today. Um, it's oh. not us singing them, but um, actually, like you say, the words are really good to reflect on. And I think we're going to end with We Plow the Fields and Scuffer because we couldn't have harvest without it. But, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Happy harvest, everyone. Let's just appreciate how much God has given to us. And thank you so much for being with us, Barbara. And we'll see you all soon, church. Bye. Bye.
generosity of God. Shared ministry. A harvest of apples. A harvest of corn. A harvest of plenty. An autumn adorned. With bright coloured leaves. A full festive blend. A wonderful time for families and friends. A harvest of blessing that God did intend. A harvest of souls and a harvest of love. A harvest of mercy from our Father above. When we see the harvest, let's see through God's eyes and share with the nations the life God supplies. And so as we reflect on the intrinsic beauty of creation, harvest reminds us that it is God who is truly generous. God is generous. As God is the source of all people, all things and all creation itself, God is generous. Life itself is a gift from God. Who we are, all we have, our very bodies are created in the image of God. God is generous. As God came into creation, God lived, died and rose in creation. God in Jesus, exampling generosity in words, works and wonders as a human being. I think the early church grasped this truth, having shared time with Jesus, who was generous, the apostles. The early church lived the good news. They shared their lives together and were open to sharing generously with others. And so let's read about this as we read from Acts 4, 32 to 37. The believers share their possessions. So all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in all of them that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Wonderful scripture. And so at the heart of this scripture, the early church are sharing wealth. And this sharing was voluntary. They weren't forced to do it. It was part of who they were, intrinsically part of being church. And although private ownership was part of it, people still own things, there was a sense that everything was shared. It was what they owned together. And private ownership, you know, did carry on in the early church. In this passage in Acts 4, we see the engine of liveliness in the church as there was a powerful proclamation of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You know, again, we've said it in the past few weeks, 
But the fact is, these are apostles, eyewitnesses of Jesus' resurrection. And this brought a deep level of faithful commitment. They were quite literally sold out for Jesus, willing to give all they had for their Saviour. There was an utter belief in the life, the death and the resurrection because they witnessed it and they were motivated to be self-sacrificial, kind and generous because God had been generous to them. You know, the early church displayed true generosity in words, works and wonders because they shared ministry that was good news to the community. True generosity is self-sacrificial. It has no strings attached. There's usually a cost to the giver. And it's really, it's best to give discreetly. Jesus warns against those that, again, you know, receive uh, praise for their giving. And, you know, to give without obligation expecting a return and this is the kind of generosity that the early church had unconditional giving and at the, the heart of today's passage and last week's we see the church being generous with what they owned distributing to anyone with need and in uh, the book we're using at the moment called Unleashed Gavin and Anne Calvary. There's a, a moment they remind us of a Greek word in this book, koinonia, meaning that these early Christians held everything in common for the sake of the wider world. You know, they held what they had lightly, they would be prayerful about it, and, and they were willing to give it if they felt God was calling them to. They were willing to be sacrificial to the needs of those around them. Here's a poem that talks about meeting, or reminds us about meeting the needs around us. And it's very, very easy to not always see the needs that are all around us. Today I stood at my window and cursed the pouring rain. Today a desperate farmer prayed for his fields of grain. My weekend plans are ruined. It always makes me cry. While the farmer lifts his arms and blesses the clouded sky. The alarm went off on Monday and I cursed my work routine. Next door, a laid off mechanic fills the empty pockets of his jeans. I can't wait for my vacation, some time to take for me. He doesn't know how he will feed the family. A homeless man downtown asks for change. Well, I need a car, mine's getting old. He huddles in a doorway, seeking shelter from the cold. With blessings I'm surrounded, the rain a job at home, Though my eyes are often blinded by the things I think I own. What we own can blind us, can own us, rather than free us to give the more, more, more of our culture. Can we see the needs around us? The early church lived to meet the needs around them. They shared ministry by being generous with what they had, who they were, with their time, with their resources, with their talents. And I think the early church did so because they grasped that it was God that was truly generous to them. The community of believers were so in love with God, so filled with the Spirit, that it felt like they were family. They were living together for the same generous purpose. They 
We're family of all ages. Gifts used for the common good. Equality is found in the sharing of ministry in the early church. And here we witness a unity, a togetherness across the community. Giving frees us from the familiar territory of our own needs by opening our mind to the unexplained worlds occupied by the needs of others. Giving is a joy if we do it in the right spirit, but it all depends on whether we think of it as a what can I spare or a what can I share. The early church is an amazing example of what can I share. The church is one heart and mind in their giving. And it's estimated, I guess, round about Acts 4, there's about 5,000 of them. And, you know, that's a lot of people. And, you know, a high percentage of them were sharing life together in really tangible ways. And it was powerful. And the giving that meets needs has a, a radical impact on the community. People wanted to be a part of it. And this year, we've got a challenge to give to Operation Chad. We've got a film clip from the BMS uh, that shows uh, the work going on in, in Chad shortly. And as I said before, the missionaries we support, Gareth and Bethan, work in this hospital. And at the heart of this hospital is, is meeting needs like the early church did, being generous with time, gifts, talents and resources. And this is a quote, I think, from Bethan. Despite limited resources, they treat anyone who comes through the doors of their desert hospital. Often people who are desperately poor and could never afford the fees for treatment as a government hospital. As COVID-19 spreads across Africa, these limited resources are going to be tested to an unimaginable way. And these words challenge us again at harvest to bring and share resources with this hospital in a very challenging situation. And if we move on to look in 2 Corinthians 9, we see that not only at the beginning of the church uh, do we see um, generosity, but we also see Paul recommending to the church in Corinth generosity um, as part of church culture. And so the words from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 12. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it's written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will enrich in every way so that you can be generous every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people but is overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. The idea that generosity from the church will lead to an overflowing expression of thanks to God will make a strong witness from the church in the community. And at the end of our passage we see today Barnabas introduced to us, a Levite from Cyprus. 
And he's held up as a generous example. We see Barnabas, his character, and we see him become a prominent figure in days to come uh, in Acts. But this is his introduction. And uh, he's described as the son of encouragement, uh, simply because of his selfless giving and his godly character. The early church was not only giving as they saw need, they were kind of, you know, um, sharing ministry with the apostles. So, you know, Barnabas, you know, people were laying their, their gifts at the feet of the apostles, it says, who then gave and allocated to the needs in the community. You know, at the heart of the early church is they valued people over possessions. And this harvest, the challenge is, let's value people over possessions. Let's be a generous church that meets the needs around us. Let's use our time, our talents, our money by the early church to reveal the generosity of God. Let's do so with the generosity of the early church that met needs in the local community sowed seeds and gave thanks to God. And so others gave thanks to God for their generosity. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, you are generous. Help us to be generous. Help us to share ministry by being generous with our time, our talents and our money. Help us to live to meet the needs of those around. And Lord, as we focus on Operation Chad, help us to see the needs there in Africa at this difficult time of pandemic. Amen. Amen. So let's now focus on the missionaries that we support. Hi, everybody. So my name is Beth. Um, you probably already know this, but I'm one of the mission secretaries at Melbourne Baptist Church. Um, and this week we're doing this month we're going to do things slightly differently because we're going to be looking at the harvest appeal from BMS which is based around uh, the hospital in Chad where the shrub sole family are uh, guinea boar too so we're going to start with a few quick updates and then we're going to watch um, a video um, and then we'll pray together um, after we've watched that video so um, with regards to the people we normally pray for every month um, John and Sue Wilson who are based in Paris and um, we haven't actually had a particular update from them this month but we'll continue obviously to pray for the work that they're doing there um, for Phil and Rosemary Halliday um, they were hoping to visit us in October but with the Covid restrictions and for quarantine when traveling um, BMS have decided that it makes more sense um, there's no visits um, at this time so hopefully we'll catch up with them next year in person. Um, as I said we are going to watch a video from uh, the hospital um, in Chad which is where Gareth, Beth and Sam, Jonah and Eva are based um, at Guinea Board 2. Um, they said that they've sent us an email anyway and they said like most places the cost of PPE and medications has gone up um, they're trying not to pass the costs on to the patients, but are asking for prayer that God will provide financially to enable them to do a really big restock of their pharmacy. Um, and they ask for prayers because they're weary. Um, so we're going to pray for them for renewed energy during this difficult time. I I can uh, understand that I'm I'm weary and I'm in a country where. I speak the same language as other people and I've got my family and friends here and I'm sometimes exhausted by all of this so um, I can't imagine what it's like being in a different country with a different language that you're still getting your head round so um, we definitely need to, to pray for them for renewed energy um, at this time. Um, we pray for the Fry family, um, David is working for OM and they're based in Vienna um we pray especially for family at the moment there has been an update and i'm sure andy will send an email around later um today but um 
we rejoice with them that Debbie, Martin and Aaron have been able to stay and that um, David especially said that he enjoyed special cuddles with Aaron with their new grandchild. So that was great. Um, and we pray for the girls for school. Um, Susanna has started a new school, which has got a one and a half hour commute each way. So she is a very tired girl, as you can imagine, um, which therefore doesn't make life at home um, as easy as it could be um, and for Joanna she's in her final year of middle school um, and she's got a heavy workload and is also looking for um, a new school for September next year so we're going to pray for them as a family and then for Christ Hope which is a charity um, that we support it works in various parts of Africa um, we're going to pray especially for Moeni which is in Eswatini, which was formerly Swaziland, and I had to Google this. So I'm so behind the time. So um, apparently they changed they changed to Eswatini in uh, 2018. So I'm I'm really missed that. I'm afraid, but we do pray for one of their care points. There, they had a young boy who had heart surgery in 2018 um, with no complications. He's due to have a pacemaker uh, fitted in November. So we're going to pray for him that that surgery just goes smoothly. And they say also to praise God for the sponsors and for the provisions that they provide to enable the ministry to the children there uh, in that area. Well, I'm, I'm praying up every day that God will protect us. I pray that God will protect our team. So taking precautions, but praying a lot so that God will prevent us from being caught in uh, COVID. The heat is there and the fear of coronavirus is there. There is a lot of stress. How are you, are you tired? Well, <laughs> I'm still carrying on. Um, it's fine. That's my normal life. I feel like it's a privilege to take care of people and make sure that um, they're healthy. I'm so happy to do that every day, even though uh, in the evening I'm exhausted, but I, I will say though, thank you because you have granted me um, the privilege to so restore me and I will be able to do it tomorrow again. So I've seen God really moving because people come to the hospital desperate and they move out of the hospital full of joy. So I, I'm so happy to do that. Um, I'm committed to do more. It was raining, and the van I was driving skidded and flipped over. I was terrified. I lost consciousness for an hour. I couldn't see anything. I lost the ability to do anything. A doctor in Cameroon wanted to amputate my leg. I spent five months with traditional healers. I suffered terribly. My boss told me that he'd been in a similar accident. But when he went to Guinnambour II Hospital, he got better. That's why he brought me here. My leg is starting to heal. The doctors here are really looking after me. 
I think that by the grace of God, everything is going to be okay. For those who have no idea about Chad and about Guinea Hospital, um, Chad is a country where um, most of the people don't earn much to survive and, and they need care. So the most that most people come here because they know that they, have, they don't have much, but they will, we're gonna care for them. I, I would say to anyone who is hearing this message, you can make a difference in many lives. My boy is alive thanks to this hospital. Coming here has strengthened my faith. I'm so happy. I trusted the midwives. I knew I'd have a good birth. If my family, my friend, my brother fell ill, I'd call Kabasu. You can save a life. You can bring someone to Jesus. That's for eternal life. So there is a lot to give. Today, I can give malaria treatments to patients who come to us. Today, I can diagnose over 30 patients. Will you help me? Today, I can give the right medicine to the people who desperately need it. Will you help me? Today, as a doctor, I'm pleased to heal people that come to this hospital. Today, as a midwife, I can help 10 mothers give birth. Today, I can help ensure that we give quality care to all of our patients. Today, I can pray with patients in the operating theatre. Will you help me? We have Jesus to give to people, but we have skills to give good quality care. It costs just £13 to ensure each patient receives the quality care they need. For £13, you could help us save a life. And if you could give more, £80 can provide a nurse to take care of critically ill patients for a whole week. And could your fellowship come together to raise £695? That would mean 52 patients being cared for, four life-saving surgeries, and five babies making it safely into the world. We deliver babies. We remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots. We identify coronavirus symptoms and get sufferers the help they need. We bind up wounds and perform surgery. We pray for the brokenhearted. We show poor people a Christian welcome and we see them come to faith in Jesus. We do all of this every day. We do it through the heat and the long hours and the tears. We do it through the fear of Boko Haram. We do it because people here need us and because Jesus commands it. We do it thanks to you. I'm proud of the hospital because the hospital is really making a big difference. So let's pray together. We thank you that we can meet safely and freely even though there are restrictions due to COVID. We're disappointed that we won't see Phil and Rosemary in person this year, but we pray that the extra time they spend in France will enable them to plan and to look forward to what will happen in the coming year. We give thanks for the work that John and Sue and Phil and Rosemary do in France and pray for your blessing and safety on them over the coming months. We give thanks for the Fry family we thank you for their continued optimism in the light of difficulties. But we thank you that they've all been able to be together over the summer. And we pray for Joanna and Susanna as they continue at school for inquiring minds and restful sleep. And for Christ's hope, we pray for continued good health for the child who needs more heart surgery, for a successful outcome and a smooth recovery. And for the Shrub Soul family and their extended family at Guinea 2 Hospital in Chad. We give thanks for the amazing work that goes on there day by day. For good maternal care, for the safe delivery of babies, for the lives that are saved, for the physios, the pharmacists, the health care advisors, the doctors, the nurses, the list will be endless. We thank you for their willingness to serve you and for the way that the hospital is seen as a beacon in the area, not just for its health care, 
but for a place that isn't afraid to show the love of Jesus too. We ask now that people will be able to give what they can to enable the hospital to stock up on supplies and to keep the costs low for the patients. And we pray for all those who work there. We pray that you will give them rest and enable them to keep on keeping on. We bring all of these prayers in your name. Amen. Obviously, um, just as a quick add on, probably at this time of year at church, I would do a sale of chutneys and jams, etc., to raise a bit of money. So um, I'll put details on the Facebook page of what I've got currently available and um, sort of donation suggestions. And then we can figure out a way of um, getting that delivered to you or you collecting it from us. Um, so, yeah, watch the Facebook page and there'll be stuff on there later today. Thank you all. It was great to share our missionary prayers and to focus on Operation Chad. And just for a few moments of this harvest time, we're going to bring some intercession that helps us think about how we relate to the world and we're caring to the world uh, at this harvest time. So let's intercede. In a world whose web of life is intricate and beautiful, save us, Lord from carelessness and blindness. In a world whose creatures are so varied and vulnerable, save us, Lord, from plundering and cruelty. In a world whose waters are fresh and whose oceans are laden with salt, save us, Lord, from wanton pollution. In a world whose forest Forests protect our air and our wildlife. Save us, Lord, from the systems that drive us to destroy them. In a world whose fruits are rich and plentiful, save us, Lord, from waste and greed. In a world where we have resources to share, save us, Lord. Help us be generous and thankful for all you provide. Amen. So we hope to see you tonight for a time to reflect where we continue to thank God for God's amazing provision. God is generous. Let's bring, uh, let's bring a blessing. Lord, help us at this harvest time to bow the knee and its worshipping. To bow the head and its thinking, to bow the will and its choosing, and bow the heart and its loving. Amen. Let's join in with a classic harvest hymn as we conclude our online service by singing, we plough the fields and scatter.